All right, well, so um, I want to talk a little bit more about the, the field site that Ernie just described in the previous talk um, and give a little bit of an overview of some of the, the science objectives from the geodes perspective um, and some of the presentations that people are giving here at this conference and give a little advertisement for each of those studies. So um, if you have a chance, go visit those, those posters. Um, just a little bit more background on Patrio. Um, this is a volcanic field that's had eruptions over the past million years or so, um, almost up to the present. Um, it's very accessible. It's about 50 kilometers um, west of El Paso, Texas, so you can fly in and be in the field within about an hour. Um, there's over 100 different types of, of or, um, volcanic centers that are located within the field. So if you want to go visit cinder cones, you can go see some Mar volcanoes. I'll describe a little bit more about those here in a second. And there's also basaltic lava flows and even a, an old lava lake that you can go check out in this region. Um, and so this has been used by the RISE-2 survey team as one of their primary field sites for investigations. Um, and so Geodes was able to join them in the field and, and, and add a little bit of our science and investigations to this as Ernie described in the previous talk. <clears throat> All right. Let's, where should I be pointing this? Uh, it's not really, there we go. All right, so just a little bit of background on Mar volcanism. Um, Mar volcanoes are basically a type of eruption where we have magma coming through depth um, and interacting with water and creating an explosion. So you get an explosive event at the surface that dumps a bunch of ash and material onto the rim of a newly formed crater. Um, basically that crater itself undergoes modification after the eruption and you basically get this backfill into it and you have a tephra ring that forms around the rim of the actual crater. Um, and this is primarily driven by the thermal energy released by that magma interacting with the, the actual groundwater table. Um, and it's something that um, is an, of interest because this kind of volcanism is expected elsewhere in the solar system. It's also an important kind of volcanism in the sense that it brings um, materials from depth up to the surface. So it creates um, xenoliths that get erupted onto the surface and it gives you access to some of the deeper crustal structure that underlies the actual volcano. Um, can you go advance it, please? Still not working. Yeah, I'm touching the big button. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so Kilbourne Hole in New Mexico is an example of one of these kinds of Mar um, volcanic events. Um, the, the exact age is somewhere between 24 um, and 100,000 um, years in age. This is actually a national um, natural landmark designated here fairly recently. Um, there's another Mar crater just to the south called Hunts Hole. Um, and this particular um, Mar is, is an example or really famous for the, the xenoliths that are found all over the rim of, of, of the crater. Um, the, the rim itself has a pyroclastic um, surge deposit at the base of the rim. And then at the, above that, you have these just ash deposits that have fallen on top of it. Um, this kinds of explosive deposits are not dissimilar from the kinds of deposits that have been detected on the moon. Some people actually have inferred that some of the pyroclastic deposits on the moon might be formed from a Mar volcanic type of process. Um, and these types of and these deposits have been used by the the Rise Two team to basically um, study um, both the scientific background, how the, the volcano formed, how the Mar deposits have been formed, um, test instruments, basically go out there with handheld instruments and see how they can be used in the field. And then also study concepts of operations and do astronaut training in this particular locality. And so Geodes has been able to go out with them in two different field seasons, one in November of 2021, so over just a little bit over half a year ago, and another one more recently in April of 2021, and then add our geophysical investigations to this field site. And so I don't think the, the laser pointer is going to work. Oh, okay, actually, it does. Interesting. Um, so here's an example of some of the, the mantle xenoliths that can be found at the site. These are big chunks of, of layers of light olivine um, modules coming from the, the, the mantle of the underlying um, the crust at this particular location. And you can find these all over the, the rim of the crater. Okay, let's see if this advance works. Still not working. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to shift gears here quickly and talk a little bit about some of the presentations that are here about Kilbourne Hole. Um, the first one of these is basically doing some geophysics on the rim, like Ernie was describing in his presentation. Um, this is a combination of active seismic lines. This is going to be presented by um, um, graduate student Lyndon Wyke, who's a, a student working with me at the University of Maryland. Um, and these, these um, geophysical lines were collected along with GPR, um, as well as magnetometer data, and then we also have LIDAR scans of the site. Um, so you can take these and put them all together and do some really nice interpretation of the, the, collabor the, the coordination between the geology that you see in terms of the deposits and then the geophysical signatures that we picked up with the, the, the geophysics. 
So next slide, please. No, nothing. Um, we also had the opportunity to take some samples. Um, and so we collected um, a variety of different representative materials from the field site, um, and then taking those back into the lab. And this is something that um, Casey um, Braccia has been working on for uh, our team as well, and basically taking cores of these and then measuring their, their, their properties in the actual laboratory, and then making measurements of the internal porosity and, and properties of the materials. And so then we can link those back then to the, the, the geophysical measurements that we've made in the field at the larger scale and see how these are connected with each other. And then I'll try one more time, but please advance. Um, we also had the opportunity to test an instrument, and this is um, a, a tomo, uh, it's a, basically an X-ray fluorescence compact low power X-ray imaging CT scanner. Um, so if you ever want to take a sample and see what the internal porosity is in the field, this is this is your guy to talk to. Um, this is with a uh, Huapeng Huang, who's actually here. He has a poster that you can go check out this technology and see how it works. But we did some scans of some caliche um, encased roots, and you could actually see the internal porosity of the root and also the porosity within some of the samples. So that's something you might want to check out if you're interested in that. Um, next one, please. And then we also, in the, the, the return season in April, we, we did another type of seismic survey where we focused on the reflectivity properties of the subsurface to try and map out the deep internal structure of the MAR itself and look for the, the intrusive diatreme that basically sits at depth. And this is an important scientific problem for trying to constrain essentially the amount of energy that was in place by the magma when it was intruded into the, the crater and formed the MAR. And so we did an active source seismic line down into the, the, the crater to actually start to image this. And this is, this is work that's still in progress. We don't have a presentation here at the, the conference, but stay tuned for, for more details on that. All right, next slide, please. All right. And so then the final thing, and this is what Ernie described in his presentation, is thinking about how we can do um, concepts of operations basically in this type of environment. And so this was in collaboration with the, the RISE 2 team who were, who were working out there at the time, where we made basically um, decision making trees for how you would go about doing the, the, the science and collecting the data that, uh, at this particular site. There was also a chance for us to interact with some astronaut training and get people familiar with some of the different types of geophysical techniques that people might want to use on the surface of the moon. And then study a little bit how, you know, deploying a, an instrument to the ground in one of these um, um, motion restrictive spacesuits might affect how you would go about deploying, say, a seismometer node onto the surface of the moon. So this is another kind of thing that we were able to do there uh, out at this field site. So last slide, I think. Right, so if, if you want to know more, um, please get in touch with me. Um, we've done a lot of outreach on this particular site, so if you want to follow on what we were doing out there, there's a NASA Expeditions takeover that was on Twitter here um, not too long ago, so you can go see some of the details of that if you go back into the history of that. The data are going to be put up into uh, a public repository, so if people want to get their hands on some of the data that were collected, um, these will be located in the digital repository at the University of Maryland, so there's a searchable archive there you can go look through. We're also developing a public um, discoverable and searchable archive that you can go through and see the different types of data that might be presented for a particular location. And then, of course, you can um, go and check out the posters here by the various um, participants in these field seasons and talk to them about what they were doing out there. So that's all I've got. So thank you very much. Uh, take questions. OK. Anything online? I, I got one real quick. Um, sure. I'm curious about the, the mantle xenoliths. Are those well characterized or are you working with folks um, to characterize the, the petrology and geochemistry of those samples? Um, those have been, I think, pretty extensively studied by the, the terrestrial um, ge chem geochemical community because they're actually a type locality for representative olivines from the mantle. So definitely a lot of characterization there. Thanks. Yeah.